Rachel Alford here from Cozy Mix Designs, and today I'm going to go over how to make the beginner towel topper. This is part of my absolute beginner crochet pattern series. You can see I have three patterns already and I have plans to do more throughout the year. So make sure you subscribe so that you can stay in tune and see these amazing absolute beginner crochet patterns. So this crochet towel topper is made by making a rectangle and then you sew the rectangle onto one of the wooden rings and then sew the other end onto the other wooden ring. And then the towel is just looped through the two wooden rings around the handle of the dishwasher or oven or wherever you're trying to put your towel, your kitchen towel. So that is how it is constructed. So let's grab our yarn and hook and let's get making. These are the materials you will need for the beginner towel topper. I have here Pima cotton yarn by Lion Brand. I recommend using a cotton yarn for this towel topper because it holds its shape better than acrylic, but you can use acrylic if you want. Um, but this is a weight four yarn. And the color of this one is called mineral yellow. And then you'll also need scissors, tapestry needle, a size H 5.0 millimeter crochet hook, and then wooden rings. And all of these things will be linked down below so that you can easily access these exact ones if you want. And then I got these cute towels from Amazon. I'll link these down below. They're not essential, obviously, for making this pattern, but if you're interested, I will link them down below. As mentioned previously, we're going to make a rectangle and then sew it onto our wooden rings on the short ends. So we will be crocheting back and forth in short rows. And of course, if you are a bit more experienced, you can begin by single crocheting onto the ring. But since this is geared towards an absolute beginner pattern, we are just gonna sew this on at the end with our tapestry needle. Okay, so let's get started. You grab your yarn and the pattern says that you need to start with a two foot tail. And that's so you can sew it on to the end, at the end. So I'm just gonna use my arm and estimate about two feet and then give myself a little bit more. And now we need to make a slip ring or a slip knot. So you make a loop like this and you fold it down on top of your um, yarn that's connected to the ball. And then you grab that strand that's in the middle of the loop and you pull up and that is how you make your slip knot. So if you give it a tug, you can see it makes it the ring bigger or smaller. So then you insert your hook into the slip knot and you're ready to begin crocheting. The pattern says that we need to single crochet, or sorry, that we need a chain nine. So we're going to yarn over by putting our hook like this and pulling through the slip knot. And that is one chain completed. And we do it again. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So you can see what our chains look like. And then we're going to single crochet into the second chain from our hook. So this loop that is on our hook does not count as a stitch. So we're going to crochet one, two. We're gonna crochet into this second chain, which is right here. So I'm gonna insert my hook right here, and I'm ready to do my first single crochet. I'm gonna yarn over by putting my hook like this and drawing up a loop so that I have two loops on my hook. And then I yarn over again and pull through the two loops. So that is one single crochet completed. You can see that we worked right here through this chain, so now we need to work into the next chain, which is right here. 
So in, inserting my hook into this chain, I'm gonna do my second single crochet. You yarn over, draw up a loop. Now there's two loops on my hook and I yarn over and pull through both loops on my hook. So that is my second single crochet. So I've already worked this space, so now I'm going to go into this space right here. Again, I yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through both of them. All right, so let's pause and take a look at what these single crochets look like. So you can see this is where we turned, sorry, this is curling. This is where we turned. So this is our first single crochet right here. And then our second single crochet is right here. And our third single crochet is right here. So you can see they make a V if you look at them. This one's a little harder to see since it's our turning one, but you can see it here. And if you're having trouble seeing it when you look at the front of the piece of the fabric, you can rotate it forward and then you can see the sideways V right here. So one, two, three. So that's how many stitches we've done. We need to do eight. We're gonna do it all the way down all of these chains. So I'm going to work the rest of these chains and we'll do the last one together, the last single crochet. Make sure that you don't twist your chains or you'll have a weird divot. So you can see I have two chains left. So let me do, that's my seventh. And here's my last one. This is where I'll insert my hook. And you can see this is my slip knot to begin with and you ignore that. So we're just gonna work this last one right there. And you work it just as you normally would for the rest of these that you did prior, you draw up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through two. So let's count how many we have in this row to make sure that we did it correctly. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and our last one, eight. So we have eight single crochets in our row. So this one is done correctly. To finish the row, we turn. And that completes row one. To begin row two, you're going to chain one by yarning over and pulling through. And that is our chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And now we're going to work back across these stitches that we made. So the first stitch we're gonna go into is right here, which is at the base of this chain. And you can see I went through both loops, the front loop and the back loop. So let me put it into the next stitch because you'll be able to see it a little bit easier. So here's the front loop and here is the back loop and I'm going to insert my hook under both of these loops. That's how you do just a regular, normal single crochet. There are stitches where you can do just front loop or just back loop, but for this project, we're just doing a regular single crochet. So going into this first stitch here that's at the base of the chain one, I'm inserting my hook, and you can see I'm under both loops, and then I'm going to yarn over, draw up a loop, and I have two loops on my hook, and then I yarn over and pull through both loops. And that's our first single crochet. Going into the next stitch, I'm gonna insert my hook under both loops, and then I'm going to yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Again, into this next stitch right here, I insert my hook, and I draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Insert my hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Keep on doing it down for row two and I'll show you what the last stitch of this row looks like. All 
Okay, so we've reached the end of this row. We have one more stitch and this one is a little bit harder to see because we had our turning chains at the beginning. So um, the best thing you can do for row two is just to count your stitches at the end to make sure you end with eight single crochets. Really you should just be doing that for all the rows in your, um, in your project, especially if you're a beginner crocheter, just because it's very easy to drop a stitch at the beginning or the end of the row, it's pretty common. So this is where our last stitch is gonna go, right here. So you can see we have our turning chain and then this will be our last stitch. So let's do that last stitch together. And then let's count our single crochets to make sure we have eight. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight single crochets. And remember that chain one that we did to begin is ignored. It is not counted as a stitch in this project. So to complete row two, we turn, and that is the end of row two. So let's do row three together. Uh, again, you yarn over, pull through, and that's our chain one, which we ignore. It does not count as a stitch. And going into this space right here at the base of chain one is where we will place our first single crochet. So here's the first single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So those are our eight stitches that we did. We turn and that completes row three. So I'm going to continue in this manner for all 20 rows. Um, I'll do row 20 with you and then we will work on sewing this onto the wooden rings. Here I am just completing row 19. So I am ready to do the last row, row 20. So I chain one and then I'm going to single crochet across like this. And I should just have eight single crochets like normal. Like this. And one more single crochet here at the end. There we go. So to finish off our project, in the pattern it says we need a two foot tail. So I am just giving myself two feet here so that I can, okay, so you can see I have two feet here. I'm just gonna cut it so that I can sew it onto the ring. There we go. So I have two feet at the end of my project and two feet at the beginning of my project. Now we are ready to sew our wooden ring onto one of the sides of our towel topper. So using a tapestry needle, um, just one with a blunt tip, that will make it easier to sew it and it just needs a large eye. So thread the beginning tail and then you're just going to insert your hook through the loop or through the center of the ring and then back through the beginning chain stitch. Like that. And then you're just going to sew all the way across here. So again, you go through the center of the ring down and then into the next chain stitch and loop it around. And that's how we are sewing 
our rectangle onto the ring. Go into the next stitch and around, pulling it taut as we go. So going back all the way across, we're gonna do this for one pass and then we're gonna do it back down so that it is extra secure. That's why we have two feet that we left at the beginning of our project to make sure that we have enough yarn to do this back and forth. Okay, so that was my last chain. So I'm going to go back down and into the same chain stitch and I'm gonna start going back this way now. So into the next chain. And when you're doing it, just make sure that it tightens where you want it to. I try to have it go in between the stitches just because it helps give it a cleaner look, in my opinion. And then once we've done all of these chain stitches again, then we will weave in the tails. Oh, that one was actually where it was supposed to go. There we go. And I'll show you how to weave in the tail after we've done this. There we go, just a few more stitches. Very good. Second to last. And our last one. Okay, there we go. So I am saying this is the right side of my piece. Um, and so I am just going to go to my wrong side by just inserting my hook through the stitch right next to it and pulling across or pulling through and then flipping it over and this is my wrong side. So to weave in the tails, you're just going to go, you see this stitch, this V right here, you're going to go through, go under these Vs, the, these Vs, <laughs> these legs of the V, like this. You can go however far you want, and then you're gonna pull it through, but don't pull it too taut, otherwise you'll pucker. So you just want it to be relaxed and then you go back and that really helps bind the stitches and the leftover yarn in place like that. And then you just cut the yarn like this. And that's how you weave in that side. Okay, let's get started on this side together. I'm not gonna do the whole thing um, with you because we, uh, we've we already done the one side together, but I will get us started together. So making sure that you're on the right side. So I wove in this tail on this side, so I'm gonna flip it back over to my right side, and then I'm going to start again. So I have my second ring and I'm gonna go down through my ring and into that first stitch right here. Sorry, you can't really see it because of the ring. Into the first stitch right there. And just sew it all the way down again. And once I reach my last stitch, I'm gonna sew back across. Like this. And then of course, to use this towel holder. I realize that the name of this pattern is a towel topper and it's not really a towel topper, but it's more like a towel holder. But I felt like if I named it towel holder, it wouldn't really be searchable. <laughs> so that's why I still called it a towel topper. Um, but to use it, you obviously just put the rag through. So you put this around whatever um, you want, whatever handle you want it to be around, and then you put the towel through both of these loops. Um, 
So that's how you use this towel topper. <laughs> pseudo faux towel topper, I guess we could, should call it that, huh? Okay, so I'm nearing the end of this pass of sewing it through or around the wooden ring. Just have one more. There we go. Just like that. And then I'm just going to sew it back down, sew it back down again. So that is how you do the beginner towel topper. And thanks for joining me today. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you liked it. I am Rachel from Cozy Nooks Designs and make sure that you give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions and subscribe to my channel for future free patterns and tips.